Come Holy Spirit and enkindle within us the fire of your burning love. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. Good morning. It's been a long decade this year since March 2020. So much trauma, dissension, loss, and death. As of Friday, March 5th, here in the U.S., 5 133,642 people have died from COVID-19. 533,642 people, and that number equals the populations of Lansing, Ann Arbor, Wyandotte, Trenton, Lincoln Park, and Grozeal combined. How do we reckon with this loss? How do we even have the ability to fathom the holes their lost lives are leaving? How do we keep going on? We don't. Friends, we have been wandering in this pandemic wilderness for a time now, and we need rest, we need strength, and we need some hope and creativity before we carry on. And the Israelites, the Israelites of old knew all about the wilderness, wandering, carrying on day by day, released from slavery in Egypt, but now in the desert with manna to eat. But what for their souls? And now we hear in our scripture that they have made their way to Mount Sinai. And they are to spend the next 11 months at the foot of this holy mountain. And this time, this period in their lives will shape and form who the Jewish people are called to be for centuries to come. And biblical theologian Washington Jarvis says that Mount Sinai is the place where mountaintop experiences were invented. It is here, after the crashing thunder, quaking earth, and blaring trumpets here at the foot of Mount Sinai that the Israelites receive God's law, the Ten Commandments. And that law is not a burden to bear or cumbersome rules to follow, but rather frameworks, gifts upon which to pattern their lives. And this morning, in the midst of our own enduring sojourn in the wilderness of COVID-19, I find myself inexorably drawn to the commandment instructing them, instructing us to rest. God calls us to rest. God demands that we rest. God says to the people, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all of your work and all of your tasks, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Do not do any work on it. And interestingly enough, 
This is the longest commandment. It's the commandment with the most explanations around it. And I think that's because it tells us not what to do, but rather to be, to breathe, and to sigh, and to remember that in the end, God is in charge. The psalmist says, be still and know that I am God. In Psalm 46, verse 10. And although we have countless gifts and talents given to us by God to use and to transform our world, we also have to remember that not all of it is up to us. Dr. Gunther Plout, in his book, The Torah, A Modern Commentary, says this about the Sabbath. He says, its mood is both serene and joyous. Morning practices cease as does fasting. It's a time for recollecting God's goodness and acknowledging God's sovereignty. It provides both social balm, intellectual expansion, and a shutting out of the day's cares. It is spiritually and physically restorative. And Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel says that the Sabbath is an island of stillness. He writes, in the tempestuous ocean of time and toil, there are islands of stillness where a person may enter a harbor and reclaim their dignity. The island is the seventh day the Sabbath, a day of detachment from things, instruments, and practical affairs, as well as an attachment to the Spirit. A detachment from things and practical affairs and an attachment to the Spirit. My spouse, Susan, sent me a link the other day to an article in Inc. magazine. And I don't usually see Inc. and Exodus going together, but work with me here. The article was entitled, Steve Jobs, Albert Einstein, and Neuroscience All Agree, Your Daily Routine Needs More None Time. Non-time. The article points out that some of the most creative people in our world spent significant time doing nothing. Albert Einstein would sit on his sailboat and just watch the water go by. And the article goes on to explain that when our minds are stressed, And when we are feeling overwhelmed, neuroscientists have found that our brains focus on details, activating primarily the left hemisphere of our brains and thus preventing us from seeing the big picture. We're just narrowed in and focused. And to be more creative, we need more non-time, quiet alone, insulated away from the tasks and the stresses of the world. And I cannot imagine a time when we have been more stressed and overburdened with the pressures of the world. We are living in a cliche-ridden, unprecedented time. A time when scripture 
from thousands of years ago offers us a way forward. In this gut-wrenching time, in the bits and pieces, in the minutes, in the hours and of a day that you might be able to find, my prayer for you, my prayer for me, my prayer for all of us is that we will make holy the Sabbath, that we will rest for a bit so that in the midst of the grief and the pain, we may be restored and renewed and that in the quiet, non-time of our lives, we may hear the still, small whisper of God and discover the creativity to face this challenge, the sustenance to carry on, and the soul food to squarely confront, endure, and even triumph over the relentless tirade of this pandemic. Friends, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen.